Okay, in this class we are going to look at Socratic questioning. This is a method of discovering truth by asking questions. And Socratic refers to the philosopher named Socrates who invented this method. It's an old method. It involves asking the right question. So, it is from Wikipedia. You can find all the stuff on Wikipedia. Just type into Google and type Wikipedia Socratic question. You will find the stuff out there, including spelling corrected. So what is it? It's a discipline of discipline questioning and in to pursue thought in many directions and for many purposes. So what that means is basically if you have a complex idea and a really complex question comes up, you need to ask a lot of questions to explore a complex idea, to gr get the truth out of things and to open up issues and problems. And sadly, a lot of uh, students are taught not to ask questions but just to uh, write what's in the book and this is the opposite of that you ask questions uncomfortable questions and discover assumptions that were not mentioned analyze concepts distinguish from what we know and what we don't know and typical thinking involves assuming that we know everything the teacher knows everything but in real life there's a lot of we don't know and we just think that we know and then we have to figure out the implications of what we think and to control the discussion so we'll get into some examples and you can apply to anything any problem that you have or situation that you have in your life so we we'll look at some examples anu says i don't understand the stock market everyone makes money on it but i lost all my savings on ipl stocks so, so that's a statement that she made and the biju has to ask questions to figure out what does she mean by that and then can he can he help anu think in a systematic manner so Biju has a question, everyone, how do you know that? First of all, everyone makes money on it in the stock market. That's what Anu is claiming. So Biju is asking, does everyone, how does, how, how does she know that? So Anu says, I read in the newspaper that everyone makes money on stocks. So then Chetan brings the next point. Do you believe everything you read, hear or read? That's an important point. And then we'll see more questions. So then Biju has the next question. What is the strategy for trading stocks? So Anu explains, buy low and sell high and keep the differences profits. Jason says, do you believe in simple cliches can substitute for hard work in understanding financial management and how stocks work? So that brings the next topic. Cliches can just help get you started, but they don't really solve the problem unless you put in the hard work. So Anu says, uh, keeps up an argument by saying on the average stocks go up so no matter what I buy I should make profit so the next question Biju asks is so your stocks are average so so what is the average is it like a mutual fund a bunch of stocks a basket of stocks okay so Chetan adds that thing third mistake not understanding statistics just because average goes up does not mean that your profit also goes up okay so average is not enough and then David brings the next question using the what's the meaning of the word average okay it can mean many things in different situation on the average going up average involves time also in this case so then Anu appeals to emotions I always pray before buying my stocks my mom said luck favors the pious so Biju asked does it, do you think the prayers affect the stock market and how okay so there are many questions you can ask at this point but just an example to clarify that uh, how Anu's th thinking is and what she can do better with her money. Biju says, you better stop trading and cut your losses. Anu says, another cliche, I won't give up. I read that winners don't quit and quitters don't win. So Jaden brings up the next, are you applying that lesson in the right context? You can't just apply any, any proverb in any, every situation. You have to basically understand the situation actually know your what has happening and apply the right set of problems you just can't uh, keep not quit if things are going wrong so that's a platitude and proverb winners don't quit and quitters don't win so Anu says so if I persist I sh will I win so the next question you need to ask is this a law of nature just somebody just said it and and made money out of it so persistent is like if you look up on Wikipedia you find something like persistent is the people who don't quit 
and losers are the people who don't win. So first you need to define what these words mean. Winners are basically persistent people and losers are basically quitters. Quitters are a subset of losers. So the other reasons also where you can lose and you can be persistent and not win in this case or you can lose and not be a quitter. So it's not enough to like assume that quitters don't win and quitters are losers and stuff like that. So and sometimes drawing the diagram helps. So dogmatism is harder than Anu says I have read that winners don't do different things they do things differently. So this is again a platitude that here on the in books and stuff. So I am going to change my strategy and visit a new st astrologer to advise me on stocks. So they do things differently. So she's going to do things differently. Instead of trying to change her uh, financial strategy, she's going to change her astrologer. Chinda business, can you apply these lessons blindly? So you can see more flaws in the logical reasoning. Chetan, it's also a matter of viewpoint. That means Chetan luck. How is this different from gambling? Anu says, gambling is illegal, but trading is legal. We pay taxes and profit. I want my taxes back. So then David brings our next point. What is the definition of gambling? It is betting your money and depending on chance to make a quick profit. Were you doing that? Yes, but God knows I am honest. Okay, that's another thing. What does God knows mean and what does honest mean? So Biju says, in stretching the argument, if you gamble, you have broken the law and you can be arrested. David says, tongue in cheek. And if I bet for rupee 5, I can be arrested for gambling? Biju says uh, actually points out again another flaw in the reasoning that it costs more to actually file a case and it's, bet and it's a matter of degree amount. Nobody cares if you bet for 5 rupees but if you bet in a big term the law is broken. It's, it's broken in letter but not in spread till amount is reasonable to pursue a case. So in your case you basically take exercise apply this questioning to some problem that you have and then also you have to take multiple viewpoints and then imagine your friends are arguing from the different point of view from yours and you can take any topic that is uh, troubling you or that you need to get clarity on for about ethics of match fixing in cricket buying stocks versus gold which is a better investment what's a good investment strategy or what should you be doing doing a job versus studying for higher degree all these are topics that yeah, you need to think about and what better way to think about then ask questions about it and ask from different points of view what will different people say what will your manager say your teacher say your parents say your friends say and see what your family members say and see how different answers come up and what kind of questions are because everybody has their own stake and the stakes are different for different people and different logical reasoning can be there and also you got to weigh in your own emotions and logic thank you